Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F14B Tomcat and we're going to be looking at the HUD, the HUD mode and symbology, the VDI mode and symbology, and a quick look at the HSD. Let's just get rid of that stick with backspace. First of all, a quick word about the scope of this video. We're going to be looking at the basic mode and the basic symbology display but we're not going to look at navigation specific symbology because we're going to cover that in the navigational videos that I've already done and we're not going to cover the weapon specific symbology because we've already covered that in the weapon specific video so it's just the the basic modes and symbology now the first thing is our control panel down here let me just settle down here the first thing is our master display mode do we want it in takeoff cruise air to air air to ground or landing so it's obvious when you would use each one of these and regards to the displays it will tailor the displays to specifically show the symbology required for each one of these and we'll go through all of them to see the differences we'll start with takeoff next we have extra hud control here do we want to declutter the hud or not and we'll have a look at that in a second as well as that, steering information is going to be displayed. This is navigation and stuff, but just generally speaking, steering, steering navigation can be displayed on the hub. Do we want it to display ACL, automatic carrier landing from the AFCS, or do we want it to show ILS or ICLS steering information from this unit here, the ICLS unit down here? Next, the VDI, similar thing, the feed to the VDI. Do we want to show normal, which is pretty much what we've got down here at the moment, which is essentially a repeater of the HUD. Well, that's not quite true, actually. It's a supplement to the HUD, really. Uh, do we want to show normal or TV mode? TV mode means that we get the TV feed from either the TTS, the television camera set, or the lantern pod, if we've got that installed and set up. Again, we can have repeat steering information. Do we want it from automatic carrier landing or the ICLS? Next, we've got the HSD down here. Do we want it on nav mode as we've got here? Do we want it on TID, tactical information display, which is essentially a repeat from the TID feed from the Rio seat? And then there's the ECM, which is not a selectable option at the moment. As far as I'm aware, that won't be a selectable option. Next, we have an ECM option, override or off, but as far as I'm aware, that is not implemented at the moment. Master controls, do we want the VDI on or off? So this is the power to the VDI, the power to the HUD, the power to the HSD. So we'll start with the HSD first, and just a very, very quick overview is all we're going to do. What we see with the HSD um, depends with our current steer command as set here. Steer command is a point a singular point that we're going to steer to. Currently in destination, that means an INS navigation and destination as set up by the Rio. As you can see, we have a selected waypoint at the moment. It is range 15 miles away. The heading from us is shown by this V here, along with this arrow here. Usually this arrow would be lined up with that V. It's just because I've got an active pause. It gets a little bit buggy and these two start to separate. That is our 12 o'clock position. That is our six o'clock position. Uh, this compass rose is obviously the compass rose, so we're heading 315 or something like that at the moment. We've got our current mode selected, destination. We've got our wind speed and wind direction. We've got, sorry, wind direction and then speed. We've got our true air speed here and our ground speed there. Next, we can have it on TACAN steer command. And it's pretty similar. We'll have the range up there to the selected station. We'll have the heading to the selected station as a little triangle. We don't have that at the moment because we're not tuned into a station. And we've got a course line here that we can change with this guy here. And a course line deviation line which will be moving along these little chaps here. Again, this is all covered in the proper navigation videos so we won't go any further than that at the moment. Other modes with uh, similar symbology. We have AWL, that's ACLS. We have vector, where we're just showing similar to our destination, except we don't have a range. And our manual mode, where we can set a course line, and we can set a heading. Okay, so this is all I want to show with HSD. Next to the VDI, so that is the default VDI screen, and if we went to TV, that is the feed from the TCS as set up by the Rio at the moment. A quick look at the symbology, if we just move the camera quickly. Along the top here is our magnetic heading tape we are heading the direction of the center with our chevron here you can see we're currently heading approximately 315 magnetic 
This guy here is not our current heading. This is the heading of our current selected point of interest. In this case, I think it's an INS waypoint, which is about 350. Here is our pitch ladder. So that is our horizon there. That is plus 10 degrees, plus 20 degrees, plus 30 degrees, minus 10 degrees, minus 20 degrees, minus 30 degrees. We can see the beginning of steering information here. This guy is idle at the moment. He's not guiding us. But if we did have our AWS, uh, sorry, our ACLS or ICLS guiding us or our TACAN, um, then this guy would become steering information. But again, we're not going to cover that today. We have our attitude indicator, which is this guy here. It's a dot here and our wing symbol here. So if we were to roll, in fact, we'll show that now. And pause, roll. You can see how that shows our attitude in terms of roll. And also if, if we were to pull up, that shows us pulling up roughly about 10 degrees. Okay. Next, we've got some control knobs around here, so let me just recenter. So we can change the HUD symbology brightness with this guy here. We can change the VDI brightness with this guy here. The VDI contrast with this guy here, this is mainly for when it's in T, uh, TV mode for the TCS or the lantern feed. We've got the VDI trim here where we can actually adjust the, is it the horizon and the pitch ladder. We've got the HUD trim where we can do the same thing. We've got a night filter for the HUD symbology. We've got a night filter for the VDI, if we click in the middle here. Okay, next we're gonna move up to the HUD and go through the various symbology modes with the various display modes selected. First of all, let me level out. Okay, so we're starting in our basic takeoff mode here. In fact, I should show what declutter does first of all. So that's the screen in normal. If we were to declutter, then we lose the heading tape of the VSI here and we've just got our roll symbol and our pitch ladder. Let's put that back on. So basic takeoff mode. We've got first of all our pitch ladder. That is our horizon line there. That is our plus 5 degrees, plus 10 degrees, 20, 30, uh, minus 5, minus 10 and so on. In the middle here we have what the flight manual calls our roll indicator or our roll symbol. So the position of this symbol here isn't really relevant to anything. What it's showing us, again, is our roll attitude. So if I were to unpause and turn again, you can see it's showing, showing our roll. There was some confusion initially, thinking that this might be the aircraft datum, the longitudinal axis of the aircraft, but it's not. Next at the top, we have a magnetic heading tape from 0 to 36 and you can see our current heading magnetic is about 298 or 299. Over here we have a repeater for our VSI, our vertical speed indicator. It's currently at zero because we're not climbing or diving. That's 1000 feet per minute up, that's 1000 feet per minute down. It's basically a repeater of the steam gauge here. Next we're going to go to cruise. So we've lost some information. Uh, we've got our pitch ladder is now in increments of 30 degrees. So we've got horizon here, plus 30 there, minus 30 there, our roll symbol and our magnetic heading tape. Next, we're going to go to air to air. We've got our pitch ladder in increments of 30 degrees, our roll symbol, and we've got this guy here. Quite important is our aircraft datum line. This is the longitudinal axis of the aircraft if you like it's where the aircraft is pointing and it's the base point or reference for all of our weapons our missiles are all essentially bore sighted this is otherwise known as a bore sight and everything well apart from the cannon which is actually three degrees above this are defaulted to this point here so that's something to bear in mind now, as we said before there is extra information to be added to this mode here when we have weapons selected and whatnot but we're not covering that today Next, air to ground mode. We've got a bit more here. So in the basic mode here, we've now got five degree pitch ladder increments, zero, five degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees, and so on. We've got our altitude here, zero ASL, 10,000 feet ASL. And we're currently about, what is that? 7,000 feet, 6,500. And we can see, yes, we're at 6,600 here. This is to say that our ordnance is currently not armed and you can see that our master arm is indeed off. We've got our magnetic heading tape again here. 
Now the carrot, the chevron from the magnetic heading tape has merged with our ADL cross here and that's why we get this kind of um, weird six-sided symbol. So that's all I want to show with that. Next we've got our last mode which is landing mode and we've got, uh, I'm just going to pause it for this one, uh, we've got our pitch ladder changed to five degree increments again so plus five degrees, minus five degrees, minus ten degrees and so on. I should say as well the pitch ladder also changes with each mode selected on the VDI as well. You can see we've got these five degree increments here. Uh, next we've got our heading tape again and we've got our chevron showing our position on the heading tape. We've got our roll symbol here. We've got our VSI here again, uh, 1000 minus 1000. But we've also got some new symbols here and I'm just going to try and get them on the screen. Okay, so we've got here our angle of attack error cue or our E bracket. This is used when landing to ensure that we land at the correct angle of attack which is absolutely essential. It has to be 15 units of angle of attack. So the idea is that we attain a speed that ensures that this E bracket here is centered on our symbol here, our roll symbol. If we keep this guy centered on this guy here by our speed then we can ensure that we are at the, at the correct 15 units angle of attack for landing. This is the angle of attack that the aircraft was designed to land at and will ensure that the arrestor hook on the rear will meet the wires okay. The last symbol here is our path vector. Now this guy here, as well as being an attitude indicator, you can see it's rolling to match our roll symbol here, is actually showing the direction of that we're flying. This is the only symbol that actually shows the actual direction that we're flying. So we're currently flying, you know, a couple of degrees above the horizon there. Uh, the aircraft datum line, the cross, that's not available in this mode here, the difference, the vertical difference in degrees from that ADL cross to this path marker here is our current angle of attack. It is currently five units angle of attack or in degrees we can see that it is 1.5 degrees angle of attack. Okay so just looking for things that I may have missed off uh, we have the brightness for the HSD here we have a test for it here and we also have a brightness for the pitch ladder on the HUD there that we can change if we wanted to change that for some reason and I believe that's it so like I said there's going to be much more information about the specifics of the weapons and the, and the navigation symbology in those videos separately but that's the basic default modes and symbology covered I hope that helps and see you later